Now let's do a review on the vertebrae. First, let's look at how the typical vertebrae differ from one another. We have a cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, and a lumbar vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae is easy to tell apart from the thoracic and lumbar because of an additional feature that it has the other two do not. And that is the foramen transversarium. Transver foramen transversarium is responsible for housing the vertebral artery in the upper sixth cervical vertebrae. The way you can tell apart a thoracic from a lumbar vertebrae are the size of their bodies. The lumbar vertebrae, being lower in the back, are responsible for burdening more of the weight of your body. And thus they have a much larger body in order to burden said weight. Some features on the three are the same, and the fe some features on the three differ. First, on all three, you'll see the spine of the vertebrae, which is an inferior and posterior projection coming from all three types of vertebrae. Also, on all three vertebrae, you're going to find the lamina. The lamina makes up the posterior border, which is just lateral to the, to the spinous process. Okay? What makes up the lateral border is the pedicle, which is the area of seen right here. And connecting the pedicle from the back to the front, we have then our body, our vertebral foramen, and then we come into our lamina. So we have body, vertebral foramen, lamina on the back, and then making up the lateral border of the vertebral foramen are the pedicles. How the vertebrae articulate with one another are through the superior and inferior articulating facets. So the two superior articulating facets will articulate with the inferior facets of the vertebrae above. On also the thoracic vertebra, also on the vertebrae, what we have are the superior, on the thoracic vertebra, sorry, the superior and inferior articulating costal facets, which are responsible for articulating with the demi facets on the head of the rib to create the uh, costal vertebral joints. On the side of the, the vertebrae, you'll see the transverse process, this extension laterally. And on the transverse process, you'll find an articulating facet, which is responsible for, on the thoracic vertebrae for articulating with the tubercle on, on the rib, creating the costal transverse joint. When we have several vertebrae that are articulating with one another, you can see that the vertebral foramen ends up becoming the vertebral canal, which is where the spinal cord will run. In between each vertebrae, you have the intervertebral discs, which allow for a little bit of space in between the bodies of each vertebrae. And when that happens, it creates a little bit of space between the transverse processes which creates a intervertebral foramen, which allows for spinal nerves to come out of the intervertebral foramen and do their job in the cervical vertebrae. They make up the cervical and bronchial plexi. In the thoracic vertebrae, they end up being the intercostal nerves. And in the lumbar vertebrae, the lumbar nerves. And they are able to exit through this space that is created because of the intervertebral disc creating the space between each vertebrae. In these vertebrae here, you can see the red cord going through all of the foramen transversarium, essentially emulating what is happening with the vertebral artery once it comes off the subclavian vein, or sorry, the, the subclavian artery, and it will enter into the 
the frame and transverse cerium and travel through the frame and transverse ceriums of the upper six cervical vertebrae. Once it gets there, it will actually enter the, the skull via the foramen magnum and will join with its partner on the other side and become the basilar artery.